Hey, badass business owners, let's make sure that you're being paid correctly out of your small business. You wear two hats in your business, one as the employee doing the work in your business and the second as the business owner. Way too many small business owners make sales, pay their bills, and cross their fingers hoping there is enough money left over at the end of the day for them to pay themselves. There is no thought of making sure that the employee them gets paid and definitely little thought into making money as the business owner. Why settle for crumbs of what is left over? We want to make sure that you are being paid appropriately for being the employee and the business owner. Now, before I jump into this next section, it is important to know that when I discuss paying yourself as an employee, I do not mean that you need to go out and set up a payroll company. I just mean you need to recognize that the first money you take out of the business is for your employee work at a fair wage. This means that you pay yourself as you would any employee that you might hire. This might be $15 an hour, $20, or $25. It doesn't mean $1,000 an hour just because you're the business owner. What is a fair wage for being the employee? The reason this is critical is you use this wage to ensure that you have the proper cost of goods in your business. Your cost of goods are all of the costs associated with making or providing the product or service. If you make the product or provide the service, you are the labor piece of that puzzle. So you need to account for your time. It is by far one of the biggest mistakes small business owners make, failing to account for their labor. When you don't account for a fair wage labor, you tend not to price correctly as you are using false cost of goods. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. If you install a water heater in two hours, then you would want to make sure that your cost of goods account for the water heater, the parts, and two hours of labor. Let's say you pay yourself a fair wage of $25 an hour. Then you have $50 in labor you need to account for. If you work as a laborer for 45 hours that week, you would have earned $1,125 for your employee wages. Now let's say you spend five hours creating a batch of products you make in your business. Your cost of goods would include all of the materials and ingredients that you use, plus five hours of labor at say $20 an hour. So you have $100 in labor hours in those cost of goods for that batch that you just made. If you spend 30 hours that week on labor in your business, you would have earned $600 in employee wages. Keep in mind two important things at this point. Your labor hours help ensure you are paid correctly for your employee time, but it also helps you to ensure that you are priced correctly using your correct cost of goods. Now, since I know some of you are asking, what if I'm not providing the service or making the product? How do I pay myself as the employee? Great question. Keep in mind, you are still wearing those two hats. So you need to identify how much of your time you are spending as owner's work and as employee work. If you spend half of your time doing operational things in the business, then you could just pay yourself as an operational employee. What fair wage would you pay them to do that job? Let's say you spend 25 hours a week doing operational tasks in the business and you determine the fair wage is $18 an hour then you would just pay yourself $450 a week out of your operational costs. Keep in mind, you aren't setting up an actual payroll like I mentioned earlier. You are just making sure you account for this time so you can price correctly and get paid correctly. Let's go to our number one calculation that I'm always preaching. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals your profits. Your labor hours for making or providing the service will go under your cost of goods and your operational labor would be an expense. So your pricing must include all of your costs and all of your expenses in order for you to ensure that you're going to have a profit. But keep in mind, your profits have to do three things. The first thing is go towards retained earnings, money you're going to reinvest back into the business. The second thing is you pay for any taxes that you're going to owe. And then finally, the money that you will take out as the business owner, we call this a business owner's draw. For example, let's say the profits of the business are $1,000. This is after you've already paid yourself as an employee. You then decide you want to put $250 back into the business, retained earnings, but you also know you need to set aside about half this money for your taxes. Since your taxes have to cover both your profits and any other money you took out as an employee, we'll talk about this more in a second, you're going to need a higher amount. So we're going to say $500. This would leave $250 for you as the owner's draw. Now I want to pause for a moment and talk about both retained earnings and taxes and how your owner's draw might be impacted by this. First, retained earnings. 
Some business owners pocket their employee money, but use their owner's draw to reinvest back into the business. This way they can grow the business faster or purchase equipment, advertising, or something else that they might need. So in our example, the owner might put $500 into retained earnings and set aside $500 for the taxes and then take out nothing for the owner's draw. Now, when it comes to taxes, I want to hit on this point once again. It's very important that you keep in mind that your taxes are going to be on the profits that you make. But in your particular business, this is also going to include the money you took out as an employee in your business. So don't just take it out on the thousand dollars worth of profits in our example. You would take it out on all the money you took out also as an employee. So keep in mind your taxes pay for retained earnings as well as any money that you took out. Since most of you are doing business as a DBA or as a single member LLC, you will get taxed on all the profits the company makes, and that includes any money you take personally, regardless of what you're going to call it. We are just separating out the two types of income so we can make sure that you're paid correctly and that you are pricing accordingly. You will have to pay all the taxes that you normally would on any money that you make, including your self-employment tax, as well as any state or federal tax. I'm a huge fan of using a separate account for this tax money, and I have another video where I talk more about taxes, so make sure you check that one out. Keep in mind that you need to set aside money, no matter what, every single month to pay your taxes. Your local accountant or tax specialist can go over your specific needs for your business, since no two businesses are the same. Now back to paying yourself. Since you will not set up a separate payroll company, how do you pay yourself? Simple, just transfer the money or write a check into your personal account. Do not use the business debit card. Never pay for your personal stuff out of the business. You want to just take the money completely out and put it into your personal account. You need to keep these separate. You can pay yourself weekly, every two weeks, or monthly. Just take your employee money as you would any other employee. Then at the end of the month, once you've reconciled your books and you know what the profit is for the business, then you can take out your owner's draw. By the way, if you have employees, you could always add yourself as an employee as well, but please check with your accountant just to be safe. Sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't to go on your payroll. Let's take a look at one more example. Let's say you pay yourself 40 hours a week at a reasonable wage of $25. So this means you're pulling out $1,000 every single week. By the end of the month, you would have taken out $4,000 as the employee. And business was booming, so you also made $1,000 as the business owner. This is awesome. You made $5,000 total in your business personally. Now in the past, before you started paying yourself correctly, your business might have had that $5,000 profit, but you forgot that of the $5,000, you still had to set money aside for your taxes and pay for any retained earnings. So you ended up only taking home $3,500 and didn't understand where all the money went. Why did you get less money than you thought? It all comes down to knowing where the money is going, pricing correctly, and ensuring that you are taking care of your number one employee, that is you. The other challenge people face is when they hire a person, they don't know why they made less money. Keep in mind, every time you hire someone, you are giving them your employee money. So the only way that you can maintain the money that you want to take every single month is the business needs to be more profitable. When the profits go up, then you can take out more as a business owner's draw. Profits must increase in order for you to be able to get back to the amount of money you were making prior to hiring that employee. I know all of this can be confusing, but the important thing is to keep in mind that you need to pay yourself as an employee a fair wage. Then make sure that you are priced correctly so you can cover all of your cost of goods and your expenses, which includes you as the employee. Then take the profit in your business and use it towards those retained earnings, paying your taxes, and then finally pulling out extra money as the business owner. Your top priority is to make sure you pay yourself. It is not a business if you do not make money. Now check out our other videos to learn more about your business numbers.